tuned for The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled are actor Carlos Gomez and director-producer Dory Berenstein. Award-winning actor Carlos Gomez was born in New York and raised in Miami. You've seen him as a regular in Showtime's Sleeper Cell and CBS's Shark, in episodes of 24, Friends, Family Law, and Charmed, and on the big screen, A Day Without a Mexican, and the Oscar-nominated film House of Sand and Fog, House of Sand and Fog with Sir Ben Kingsley. Carlos has worked in the theater with playwrights uh, Eduardo Machado and Lisa Loomer, but he started as a dancer. Mm. I can't believe that. You were so scary when I saw <laughs> those clips of you. I thought, I'm afraid to have him on. I called our friend Debbie O'Hanion and said, no, 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 he's too mean to have. <laughs> and then she said, no, he's a comic. That's funny, that's funny. You know, Christopher Walken was a dancer, too, so. Oh, he was? Yeah, he was. Oh, and he's pretty he scary. And he's pretty scary, too, <laughs> so right. I'm in good company. <laughs> so you started as a dancer. Yeah, I did. I started as a dancer in New York. Uh, I worked with uh, Michael Peters, who was a Michael Jackson's choreographer. Worked with him for a while. Uh, traveled in Europe, and then I did uh, Zorba with Anthony Quinn on Broadway. You got right on Broadway. Not yeah. too long after you got to... Yeah, like I was like 22, 23 years old, and I was on Broadway. I was, uh, was, a, was, a, was a Were you studying acting? I was studying acting, yeah. I was uh, at this... Uh, it was a school called the Nat Horn Musical Theater on Theater Row. Oh, so you were already talked. in New York. You I went to New York, I was in New York, York yeah. I went to New York from <laughs> Miami. I was born in Miami, Cuban descent. Oh, you were born there? Oh, right. Yeah. Went to, went to New York and studied acting for like probably like a year and a half, two years. Uh, it was like a, a musical theater program. You studied dance, uh, acting, and singing. And then from there, I started auditioning, and, uh, and uh, Zorba was like the second show I auditioned for, and I got it. You looked like a Greek. Yeah. You were perfect. I'm typecast. <laughs> you really were. <laughs> <laughs> but you also did a Vita. I did a Vita at the Paper Mill Playhouse. I did a Vita. I did West Side Story on tour. Um, song and dance. Uh, I didn't do song and dance. Oh, you no. didn't. Do no, that. I didn't do song and dance. Mambo um, Kings. Mambo Kings. I did the movie. Actually, That's actually, there cool. was a, a show that they were going to produce, but uh, for Broadway, I saw, it I saw it in San Francisco. I did. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was good, except it needed so much work. Yeah, the I rhythm it, uh, and the yeah, the, it, was, um, it was hard because the movie was so great. And uh, I guess it just didn't, I didn't get to see it, but it didn't relate to, uh, to the yeah. story so well. <laughs> so Zorba was your big thing, though, That was right? my big thing in theater, yeah. And then I did straight play. I did Once Removed with Eduardo Machado at the uh, Long Wharf Theater, a straight play. Then I, then I got out of the dancing and the singing and became more of a... Is that uh, when it started? You transferred? Trans yeah, yeah. I started kind of in, in, when I was in New York to doing more straight plays. And, uh, and then after that, I came to Los Angeles. But did you spend... Um, your time on the stage while you were doing mostly doing straight and musicals. I mean, you were on the stage more than in film. Is yeah, what I'm in trying New York. To say. Yeah, in New York, I was totally. It was all theater. It was all stage. Either I was dancing, singing, or acting, but it was all, all theater. Did it help you when you came to? You know, Hollywood? it helped me. My experience helped me. I think be doing theater first is is uh, is a key to to good acting. I think. Um, but credit-wise, when you come out here, you start from scratch. It really doesn't doesn't matter. Doesn't really matter much what you do. In is New it York. changing at all about with you know? New I think York? it is changing. I think because there's more film and television actors doing Broadway shows now. I think uh, I think it, it, it is changing. Um, but at first, when I came out here, it was, uh, it was e either or. How did you cross over? Because you were used to being on stage, and you had to do this TV little yeah. Thing. You know, it took a lot of training. I, uh, I took classes out here, and it, um. you know, as an actor, when you're on theater on the stage, you know, your project is, is pretty big. But when you come on film and television, it's you got to it's the same acting, but you got to bring it all down. Oh, so. you couldn't. Did you learn from other actors? I did. I had the the, the opportunity to work with some great actors in in film and, and big movies like Sir Ben Kingsley and. I worked with Will Smith, and so I started seeing their style and the way that they acted, and and 
so I got to I got to work with really great people quickly. So and, I, and you, you pick know. up right away on the stage. I pick up right away. <laughs> They say, not so loud. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but what about that toughness? How did you get that? I mean, That's we were always, laughing I, about yeah, that, yeah. but but really, how, you know, I was watching some of those clips of you, and uh -huh. it's like, wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's. Uh, I guess being a dancer also, I'm a very physical person, so I, I, I feel, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with my with my body. So, so I get is that to part play. of it? That's part of it. Yeah, I think that is part of it. Um, but yeah, it, it's funny. When I first started film, and television, I started playing the gangsters and you know Latino cholo and blah blah blah. And then once I got a little older, then I started playing these authoritative figures. They were, they Lawyers are, but they're. And, you do know, you? Yeah, not all the time. Now I play a politician. And robbers. So, no. <laughs> yeah. Robbers. But you worked with uh, great directors, Tony yeah. Scott. Tony Scott. I did Enemy of the State with Will Smith and. Gene Hackman. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so does it change with your director? Like you also worked with Robert Rodriguez. Yeah. One of my first big films was Desperado. That uh, was so great. Yeah, it was a great movie. And it was great for the genre because it was the first time that we saw Latins in an action film in an American kind of movie. Uh, he's a genius. He's a very, very incredible to work with as a director. Very he's young, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, yeah, he was 24. 20. He had I just know. done El Mariachi, this movie, for $7,000. I know, I saw and that. And this was his first movie that Sony was giving him, you know, $7 million. So it was like he had all these toys to play with. And Antonio Banderas, that was Antonio Banderas' first movie here in the States. So did you know any of these guys before you um, went to work for no, them? No, well, I knew Salma Hayek because we had worked in, in uh, an acting class together oh. when, uh, when we first started here. Uh, and then from that, I worked twice with her. I worked with her on, on Desperado and also did uh, Fool's Rush In with Matthew Perry and her. So you, you've done uh, Machado plays, Lisa Loomer. Are they anywhere near the same kind of things? You know, um, Lisa Loomer, I did a, a, a show called Living Out at the Mark Taper right. Forum. What was, I forgot what the story was. It was about a, um, a lawyer who was a, ha she had a housekeeper, a maid, a Latina maid, and it was really a relationship between like this high powered attorney and, you know, the, the idea of having to leave your kid with this person that you really don't know. It, it was really, really, really interesting play. Got great reviews. Um, Eduardo's play was Once Removed, which was about a Cuban family that comes to the United States in the 60s. And it's really um, adapting to living in the United States. He works a lot with the, for the, with the Cuban experience yes. more, right? Yeah, he's Cuban, <laughs> and most of his plays have to do with the Cuban experience. And I'm, I'm Cuban, so. But did, have you ever been to Cuba? Uh, I went to Cuba like three years ago. I have a half-brother who still lives in Cuba. Oh, you did? So, so. I went there, and I, I really, you know, because growing up, you know, we have one aspect of Cuba from our family, you know, because what we hear and, but going there and seeing it, it's a totally different experience. But what about living in Miami, as they say, little Cuba? It is. Did you feel that same way? It, it was. Actually, I went to Cuba with Debbie Ohanian, too, my oh, you uh, friend. Did. Yeah, she's the one who took us there. It was interesting because um, it was a totally different Cuban experience when you go to Cuba. Um, you know, it's a different culture. You know, the Cubans that came in the beginning, like my parents, you know, they adapted into the American society. And then when you go to Cuba, it's Cubans, Cuba, that they're there. So it, it was interesting. It was, uh, uh, was an eye-opening experience. What but, about uh, the language? There the language no is the same. The uh, same. You go to Miami in 8th Street and you go to Cuba and it's the same. It's the same. It's the same, same, same thing, thing. yeah. Um, well, we just mentioned our friend Debbie, but she said you did a lot of comedy, that you were real. That that's your forte, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, I did a lot of uh, plays that I did comedy. I did, I was one of the only Lat Latinos on Friends, believe oh, it or not. Oh, in 12 years, they had like four Latins on the show. And uh, so I, I did, I worked with the producers of Friends on that, and I also did a show called Jesse oh, with yes. uh, Matt LeBlanc. But you didn't do any stand up comedy. I didn't do any stand up, no. It was mostly acting. Would uh, you in think TV about shows. that? I don't know. I mean, I, that's a whole different instrument no. that you have to really. <laughs> nourish and, and, and deal with when you do when you do stand up and oh. I'm an actor first and then not a stand up comedian. What do we have coming up? Uh, well, I'm doing Shark, which is a CBS show with James Woods. I play uh, the mayor of LA, uh, a pseudo Via Ragosa type. Really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which is really interesting because it's a it's a, it's a great opportunity to have a a Latino um, Mayor on a national, you know, television Have show. Have you watched Antonio? Are you watching? I've, what I've he's hung doing? out with him. Have I've hung out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's a great guy. He's like yeah. a rock star. I've yeah. hung out with him 
like from six in the morning to eleven o'clock at night. This guy is just like on the go all the time. So, oh, so you'll be patterning yourself. I on did. Those I did. I have been patterning myself on his character, and I go to the producers and give them story ideas of stuff that is happening in Los Angeles with the mayor oh, to good. give them ideas for storylines and stuff. And they've used a couple of them, which is. Do great. you write then at all? I do write also. Yeah, yeah. I'm so also that's a writer. Like but I don't write. You know, about? I just kind of you know give ideas and stuff. And sometimes I use them. Sometimes I don't. One of the things that I know you did was Cora Films. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Cora Films is my mom's name is Cora, so. Hence the name. Yeah. Uh, what we're, I'm trying to do is produce stuff for, for the Latin community. Uh, I had a, a deal with Paramount Pictures that we did a, a <coughs> show called Miami Thing, a pilot about five years ago. And um, I, through my website, I try to get young directors, get, get, try to put people together, you know, screenwriters of, of, Latin. of Latin descent and about Latin stories. And uh, I'm also in the midst of writing a, a, a movie called Los Chihuahuas. Uh, about a, a bunch of Latin actors. So and, you're uh, writing yeah, it. Yeah, 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 also. And um, so, yeah, it, it's just to try to, to get Latinos together. And, you know, I've been in this business for almost 20 years. So I know the business and I want to try to try to uh, influence more, more Latin actors and writers and directors, get them produced, get them out there. And now with YouTube and MySpace, there's so much access to put your material out there. You mean for is, these uh, other kids? For, yeah, for, the for kids. everybody else. Yeah, for kids who do short movies, little skits and stuff. And, and you find talent like that. You'd be surprised. Does your mother do the cooking for you at the um, you have your meetings? <laughs> she, she, <laughs> she used to, yeah. My mom did, uh, yeah. She, it, but it's too much of uh, the cooking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, much, Carlos, you're beans. called a great character actor. Mm -hmm. And how does that, how do you get that kind of moniker? You know, I think it's because I play such different different roles. You don't uh, mind play, being a character actor. I know. I love being a character actor because I think if you play the leading man, they, the audiences see you in one, you know, way or in one direction. And I've been working constantly doing. I'm just like the the actor that you always see. They go like, I've seen that guy somewhere, but I don't know where. You know. Yeah, exactly. And because I have the chance of doing such different roles, variety of of the good guys, bad guys, politicians. You know. And I, I love it. I'm like the utility actor that they use, and, and it's it's great because it it helps my <laughs> instrument as an actor. It's it's it's, uh, it's really cool. So it's a long way from being a dancer. Long way from being a dancer. Yeah, I, I've taken a couple of dance classes, and I'll tell you, I'm, it's a it's, real long I way. I know from being a dancer. those plies are tough. The plies are not happening anymore. <laughs> so right. uh, yeah, but uh, but it's it's a good transition. It's uh, been great. Thank you so much for coming on and thank being you. with it's us today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for watching this part of the Joan Quinn Profiles. We'll be right back with Dory Berenstein. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Three-time Tony Award-winning producer Dory Berenstein was born and raised in Southern California. She graduated from Palisades High, Smith College, Harvard University, where she got her master's degree, and in 1995 was a research fellow at Yale's Graduate School of Drama. Dory has worked in TV and film and has her 11th show on Broadway. Tell us about these Tony winners. It's so exciting. Uh, well, I've um, just had the most wonderful life uh, in the Broadway community for almost 15 years now. And uh, I had the great good fortune of, uh, of producing some amazing shows, and three of them have, have won Tonys. What were those? Uh, well, uh, Full Moon was the first show I ever did, uh, which was with Bill Irwin it was and David Shiner. It was the first show? But it was the first show, but it's been on Broadway three times. Oh, I see. And in fact, because it, it, uh, it defined labeling, there was no category for it the first time we were on Broadway, and there still was no category for it the second time we were on Broadway, and we actually won our Tony. Um, they created a, a new category for us. Is that the right? Third time. Why? Because it was... Uh well, Just, it was two people. You've had two people's shows on Broadway before. Well, uh, Bill Irwin and David Shiner are master clowns, but clowns in the European sense. And the, the work that they did, it was so funny and interactive with the audience. Um, 
but there was also music involved. Oh, so it, it couldn't be a musical, it, it couldn't be a... Oh. It wasn't quite a musical, it wasn't quite a play, see, so they created the category which still exists, which is special event. Oh, so I see. That was, that was number one. And the other one? Uh, I produced uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest with Gary Sinise on Broadway, and, uh, and then uh, Thoroughly Modern Millie. With what's her name? Sutton Foster. Fabulous. Unbelievable. Fabulous. So she lights up a stage, doesn't she, no matter what she's in? Anything she touches. <laughs> That's she's so talented. So that was fabulous. Was there producing or Broadway in your background in Southern California? I grew up loving theater. Oh, you did? I grew up I was very fortunate because my parents uh, took me to everything at UCLA, at Dorothy Town Pavilion. But they weren't, they weren't in biz the business. Not at all, but uh, they, they instilled in me a very deep love of the arts, and I had to be part of it. Well, how do you get into producing then? I mean, just because you love it, a lot of us love <laughs> theater. I couldn't imagine going out and producing something. Well, I, uh, uh, it took a long time because I, I also had never been to New York. So but it took a while, a while to, to get to New York and work my way into the Broadway community. I started out uh, for a long time in the film business. And so learned. Here? Uh, here, yeah. If you stayed in California, you live in New York now, right? Yes. If you had stayed in California, do you think you would have, could have produced oh, theater? Oh, sure. I would have. I, you would have? I definitely would have produce theater. Uh, I, I love both worlds very much, um, and I would have had to have made theater here definitely part of my life. But you haven't done any theater here. I've had shows that have, have come, you? Uh, have uh, started in, uh, be, you know, we started to work on them in California, or they've been on tour in California. Oh, you have. So is this like a testing ground? Uh, in a way? California is a great place to open show. I just opened Legally Blonde in San Francisco. I saw it. And, uh, I saw it up there. <laughs> you did. <laughs> yes. That's great. And That's I terrific. thought, this is a big hit. And I had no idea that you were going to be, be on the show. Excellent. <laughs> so that was great. But you, you did work in film here. Yes, I'm, I've mm -hmm. been with most of the studios. In, uh, in what capacity? Just learning from the bottom up or at the top? or uh, Working my way up. Uh, it, it, Disney, I was, uh, uh, ran a division that made the, all the theme park movies around the world. And oh, so, so it was fantastic um, because it was um, uh, heavy duty special effects, pushing the envelope, things that had never been done before. So I don't know if you've ever seen Muppet Vision 3D at, Dis at Disney, but it was uh, Jim Henson's last things project. Things that work, things that are played at the uh, at the theme venues, parks. Venues yeah. at the theme parks. Oh, I see. But it's ve they're very theatrical, and they're very interactive, and it's not just film. You know, there are interactive elements, and, and I loved uh, doing something that had never been done before. That was what was so attractive to me. So there's all this film being made and being used and being seen yeah. without big studios doing them, right? Or without big names attached to them. Sure, That's sure, you, absolutely. We forget about all that. Yeah. And, and you did Unzipped with Isaac uh, Mizrahi? Yes. And that was, tell us about that. <laughs> it was a documentary. It was a documentary. It, it actually started out, I was introduced to <coughs> Isaac, um, who had done a three-minute video uh, the, because he had won some major fashion award and he needed to have something to show at the event. And he said, you know, I want to do something with this, but I have no idea what. And he just jumped off that little, you know, the TV screen I was watching it on. It was uh, only a three-minute piece, but he has such personality. So we started to work on... on but how on would he get to you? Because you were a documentary filmmaker? No, I had no... Or because you were a filmmaker? What? I, had, I was in the film business. Um, the honest truth about how uh, he came to me was that his, uh, his right-hand person... Um, a lovely woman who's in the film. Uh, her husband uh, was an architect uh, who was working on my house. <laughs> well, see, it, you never know where it's going to happen, do you? Not at all. And no. when they say, oh, take it to your manicures, take it to your hairdresser, take it to your architect, right. <laughs> you never know. Sure. Especially, it doesn't matter if it's New York or L.A., does it? Not at all. But it, it was a, a, we put something, we started to shoot following the creation of a line of clothing. We, with any documentary, you're really not sure where it's going to go. And with Isaac, there were surprises every day. <laughs> and, and we, we uh, originally were trying to make a, a television special uh. to give 
people a glimpse behind the world of fashion, but uh, we were turned down by everybody. And so we just kept going and we turned it into a feature documentary and it, it won, won a big awards, award at, it? At, at Sundance and was acquired for theatrical release, so it has a very happy ending. Well, and in, in between all these plays that you're producing and putting on Broadway, you directed show business, The Road to Broadway. So that's a documentary as well. Yes, I love the format. How long did you work on this? <laughs> this, I mean, it's pretty long. Well, uh, dreaming about making it was decades, and then physically making it, uh, prep, prep took quite some time. Shooting was like around months? a year and a half. We um, it, it, a year um, to Was really it for prepping it? get everything in place and organized. Did you have to get a lot of um, approvals? I mean, did you have to have a lot of paperwork? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> An incredible amount. And, and um, uh, the movie never would have happened without the support of the Broadway unions and guilds and, oh. and AFTRA. They were uh, so supportive all the way along and made the film possible. Well, what was your inspiration? You uh, Tell us the premise of it, because it's four uh, plays, right? Four Broadway plays, and then you go on. Sure. Well, I, I w have always been captivated with what's going on behind the curtain and how the show came to the stage. And, and uh, uh, I read William Goldman's book. I don't know if you've ever read the season uh, about the chronicle of the 1968 Broadway season. And ever since I read that book in college, not in 1968, but later, <laughs> um, <coughs> I wanted to to give that uh, film life. You know, to be able to to make you know show the world the magic and the passion and the the in extraordinary creativity and the risk that goes into the creation of Every every Broadway show, whether or not it's a, a you know big musical or a small play, there's just that kind of heart and commitment involved in everything, and that's that's what that was is, your inspiration. That's basically, the inspiration and the, the the film. We followed the whole Broadway season that year because you never know what's going to happen. So, did you do more than four plays? Did you? We oh, you did. We shot the whole season. We shot everything, everything that was on, and it was really in the editing room that we ended up focusing in on Wicked. Oh. and Avenue Q and Carolina Change and Taboo. How did that happen? There were a lot of other plays on Broadway at the time. Oh, it was torture. It was an amazing season and there were so many wonderful stories uh, behind the curtain about many, many of the shows that opened that year. It was very difficult to narrow it down. And we ended up with these four shows and focusing on musicals rather than plays, mainly because I very much wanted uh, to interweave a story that at the end of the day the takeaway would be four very different experiences that uh, of what it takes to get a show on the boards. On and Broadway. these show the so very different, different that, to me they seem like they would just be the same because they're musicals. It, 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 we mixed and matched and tried many things. It made the sense, uh, it really made sense in the editing room to, to f focus on either musicals or plays. Oh. And we took the leap with, with musicals. We could make the same movie about plays with the footage we have. But oh, these. Could, would you do something like uh, that? I'd love to. But these four shows had such a different ride, such a different adventure, oh, they did. such amazing. Uh, personalities behind the curtain. You worked creators. with Alan Cummings, yes. who's a Broadway uh, actor, very good Broadway yes. actor. Did he bring an artistic light to it, or did he bring connections, or what was he? Uh, how was he involved? Uh, well, Alan and I have worked <coughs> together for a long time on, on a variety of things, and uh, and I, I love working with him. Uh, he was involved in the early stages and talking about what this film could be, mm -hmm. and then what we also did is we shot with Alan throughout the whole year, throughout the season. And it was from his perspective what was going on. Does and he narrate? Well, he, that was the original con conceit. And then in the editing room, <coughs> as wonderful as Alan, Alan is, we cut back on that because uh, we, f we felt that it made much more sense for the season to tell itself and not to have a narrator. And so a mm -hmm. Alan was not as um, on, ca he's in, in the film several times, but not on camera as much as we originally intended. So you have Wicked. Oh, you know, and Taboo, yes. which didn't stay on Broadway very long. Wicked went everywhere. Yeah, phenomenon. And Avenue Q went to Las Vegas instead of going on the road, right? But they're opening uh, their it's road tour uh, this summer. Now they're going to mm -hmm. do that. 
um, and the other one, Caroline or Change, came to California. It also had a road. It was a it was a hit, a big hit in L.A. and San Francisco and Washington, and then it just won the Olivier Award in London. Oh, and so it's playing. Beating Avenue Q and Wicked and Everybody as uh, Best Musical. But so there. then what happened to the four that you picked? Did they win Tonys? Uh, you have to watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> or read what went on last in what year? Uh, what this, year is this? This was 2003, 2004. So that would be like when you were saying Goldman did 68, mm -hmm. and so it was the plays that were just going on at that time, and this is 2003, 2004. Yeah. And um, as you said, there were so many people involved, critics, PR people, theater owners, and you interviewed all of them. They gave their their uh, expertise. or I really wanted the to give an a good overview of all the pieces that go into making a show and it, what's so wonderful about theater is that, that it's an incredibly collaborative art form. It's, you can have an amazing actor but that's not going to get you anywhere unless you have a great book writer and composer and lyricist and, and crew that's going to you know, support what's going on on the stage and so tackling Broadway from every vantage point was essential to really tell the story. Well, we will see it. And everyone will see it because it's a full feature documentary. And before we leave, we have only a minute left. You, you do something that's really great, Camp Broadway, for, for children, for yes. the youth. Yes. Uh, Camp Broadway was founded uh, almost 12 years ago with the idea that the Broadway community would give back to kids. And so it really comes from the Broadway community and so many of the talented performers and people behind the curtain are involved in, in giving kids, not training them to be divas, but giving them a love for the arts, and that's what the camp's about. Thank you so much for being with us, and we will look for your name on all <laughs> of these things now. Thank you so much. Keep riding to 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles 90017. We'll see you next time.